lads. Yeah, he's been a lot of time in here, hasn't 16, counting backwards. It's that red car in the corner, it's peg 16, working way back this way. Now peg 20 has got a scabby old number 19 on it. Oh, here we go, we're going to write this down. <laughs> 21's are clear, 19's are clear, but 20 has a scabby 19 on it. And on your right hand side, because the numbers don't tally, I've put pieces of paper down for your numbers. There's no numbers right. on that. You know, that's the first one is number two. The first one, first one, one, first one is oh, number two. Number two. <laughs> Three. You had your yeah. birthday. Oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Incredible is now Bumblebee. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Say hello to my friend, Bumblebee. <laughs> Sting like a bee. <laughs> <laughs> Eighteen. We'll see you on the bank. Right, good morning, fisher people. I'm Alan Norris from Fish on TV. And as you can see, what a glorious day it is today. And yes, it's match fishing day. It's Tuesday. There's ten of us turned up today, and we're at, we're at a pond that I've certainly not fished for thirty years. And it's called the Maggot Farm at Nottingley. It's completely changed to how I remember it thirty years ago. We're talking to some lads, most of us haven't fished it for for 30 years, apart from Richard who's in the corner over there, he's, he's fished it a few times, so he's at a bit of an advantage. It's not a deep venue, apparently it's uh, full of fish, full of silvers, carp, there's even sturgeon in, sturgeon, never caught one of those before, up to 20 pounds apparently, so uh, it's completely unknown to me. I've had a little plumb about, it's about three, three and a half foot deep. Um, at the minute I've just thrown a bomb with some popped up bread on. I'm just gonna throw it about just to do a little bit of searching, see if I can find any, you know, find any fish, see if I get any liners or anything like that. Um, I've just I'm gonna be fishing on the pole at about 11 meters. So I've just put a little bit of bait down there, a few micros, a little bit of ground bait, a few pinkies and dead man. That's as simple as I've kept it, so absolutely no idea what to expect. I've just seen Bob catch one to my right. He's chucking up towards the uh, netting that I think you can see there um, on the method feeder. So I have got a method feeder set up. That was my plan there. That's my... I've got a bit of an island to my left. I'll let you have a look. So the island's to my left there, and I've clipped up about three yards short of the island so uh, and if I start getting fish I tend to back off a little bit so then I can chase them a little bit if I have to do so that's if we do get any fish um, it's winter we've had some mighty cold days it was iced over yesterday apparently it did ring me to sort of say there might be a thin layer of ice on but it's been five degrees all night last night. It's seven degrees today, so it's really warm enough. Toasty. So, uh, no indications yet. Sean's had nothing. I've not seen anybody catch anything apart from Bob to my right. So, I'm going to do a little bit of searching about. If I do hook into something, as usual, I'll let you see me catch that because it is difficult to film catching lots of fish in winter because you just never know what you're going to get so uh, have you had any indications Sean? Well, Sean's had no indications whatsoever and we are we're three quarters of an hour in sorry yeah he's just saying there's only Bob that's got one so uh, I've had to move my camera it's the new camera as well but the trouble is GoPro have changed all the connections on it so I haven't got the mic so it's a bit of a test to see how this copes without the mic. I have put a pre-order in for a, an extra piece of kit that goes around. It's not coming out while December, where you can plug the mic in, but that's costing another £80. God damn it, GoPro. 
right and like I say and the wireless connection to it as well I still need the surround and then there's another 160 pounds of the bloody wireless it ain't cheap but if we can get the quality there who cares eh at least it's uh, it's good value for you guys anyway so I will uh, I'm going to carry on doing a bit of searching I'm going to give my short line a go in about half an hour or so three quarters I'll just have a look but I'm going to be searching around I'm going to be doing sort of six to ten minute casts on this uh, popped up bit of bread and just see if we can locate something so I'll give you an update shortly see you soon right people I'm only on my third cast we're an hour and a quarter in I've no liners I'm just moving across at the minute left to right from the island not had a liner Sean's had nothing uh, Bumblebee aka Mr Incredible he's had nothing Graham's bumped a fish off he thinks it were a car and Barry Pickersgill two down from me he's just landed a car for about three or four pounds Bob's had one at about three pounds he reckons as well he's told me it's on bomb fishermen always lie he were on the method feeder <laughs> thinks I'm daft well I am but not that daft so two fish all around the pond being caught so far I think it's going to be a tough day I don't think there's going to be any net limits violated whatsoever today so this cast being in 15 minutes I'm ready to move along a little bit more I'm not topping the uh, my pole line up with any bait because Bob's just had a little try on his pole the guys around me are on pole and they've had nothing yet so there's no no reason to top it up, no, no reason to keep piling the bait in. I'll leave that there, I'll give that a try once I've done my searching. If I locate any fish, then obviously there's no reason to move from there. What a wonderful day, I mean, it, it is cold. Uh, as you can see, I can just look in on my camera, it looks stunning, we've got blue skies, it's flat calm, a bit of a breeze appears now and again. I think there's only Jack that's cold because he's got no sun on him whatsoever. But it's just, it's just beautiful, it's a beautiful little pond. It's just missing a few, uh, a few fish. Oh, hold on mate, Graham, there we go, look. Graham, opposite me, let's have a look, here we go. He's just hooked into a, a sturgeon. So I don't know how big it is, but here, if it's anything sort of over three pounds, you've got two to three pounds, you've got to weigh it and put it straight back. And he's moaning because he's only got light gear on. He's only got light gear on and it's, uh, it's taking him everywhere, which they are powerful fish. Right, I'll just let you know, Graham did land the sturgeon. And it was eight pounds, point one four. Now I know I've had a couple of questions. What's with these weights? 8.52, 52.63. Well, when I was weighing in with the scales that bounce up and down like this, people were arguing that uh, if there was an ounce or two in it, I was, caught, I was calling it wrong. So I bought some digital scales. You know what fishermen are like. Size matters. Weight matters. Well, with the digital scales, it measures it in one hundredths. So and once it settles for two seconds, it gives you your weight, it bleeps, that's your weight, there's no argument, nobody even looks at the weight that they're going to get, the weight to hear the beep and then the weight to hear the, the weight that's called, no arguments, it's job done for me, perfect, it's made my life so much easier, <laughs> so that's uh, just in case you're wondering what strange weights they are, that's why we have the 5.2s, 5.3s, 7, 7, 4, 9, 8. That's where it comes from. It just makes my job a lot easier. No arguments, and everybody's as uh, everybody's happy with it. So. And I have had one or two questions about it. So there you go. Now you know what a mighty fisherman he is, Graham Scott. Eight pound sturgeon. Brilliant. Wish I could catch one. Wish I could get a bite. <laughs> See you in a bit. Right, people. Two and a quarter hours in, and I've not had a liner. And I 
I've not had a bite, and neither has Sean at the side of me. Mr. Incredible's not had a I think he's had one bite. Uh, Graham's not had anything else over there. Bob's had two carp. He's had two carp and he's lost one. Nobody likes to see that. <laughs> so it is fishing very hard. But the thing is, there are no fish biting at the minute. I've not seen anybody catching on the pole, so I'm still going to keep searching. So that's where we are at the minute. I'm searching for fish. We'll see if we can locate any fish. Still no bites. Graham's had nothing. Nobody else has caught anything. I can see. Nobody's catching on the pole. Hence that's why I've not had a go on it yet. Um, very, very quiet indeed. Sean's wishing he'd, he'd stayed in bed. <laughs> but very, very quiet indeed. It could be one of those days. Water leaked. Fingers crossed that doesn't happen. I've not had one yet. Um, so yeah, it's uh, very hard work indeed. Like I say, the, the guys who are using poles I've not seen him catch a fish apart from Graham, who's smack opposite me, and he's he's been on the pole now for the last half hour, and I've not seen him lift. I don't think he's having any bites either. So really hard work. But apart from that, is I don't think I'm doing too much wrong. I just it just feels like there's no fish in this area, but no line or anything. So it is a tough, tough day. Oh dear. <laughs> You've got to laugh though. The mate's just rung me. He thinks I'm absolutely raving bonkers. He thinks we're all raving bonkers, but fishing's not all about just turning up and heaving fishing. He's trying to work out how to catch one or, one or two fish in the hardest of conditions. I've still not had a bite. I've been on my pole line, nothing. I've searched all around my peg, no liners, nothing. And I've just not had a touch anywhere. Sean's just been giggling because he's missed his first little bite. Jack's not had a bite. Steve's not had a bite. Oh no, he's had one bite, Steve. Graham's not had anything since the uh, sturgeon that he caught. It's been bloody hard work. I've just got a bad feeling today. It could be the first one of the year. What a licked. And it's not great entertaining. It's an action camera. There's no action whatsoever. It's looking like a blank at the minute. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. There's 11 minutes to go. I've still not had a bite. It's looking very grim. Bob's just lost another one at the side of me. Blankety blank. 10 minutes to catch a fish. A tiddler to do. A tiddler. But that's fishing for you, isn't it? It's the first one of the year. In fact, I didn't have one last year neither. So uh, you might as well see a blank as well as heaving fishing. That's what can happen. So I think I've got maybe one cast left, maybe two. If I five minute cast, I just need one pull round to stop the blank but it's not looking good because I just can't see it changing nothing's it's just not looked like there's been any fish at all around here I've had no indications whatsoever and so I've one or two other people as well I think there'll be probably five weighing in yeah is it five? four or five maybe four four one two four people weighing in out of ten very grim indeed so I'll have a little chat with you afterwards <laughs> pretty much about nothing <laughs> no I'll give you the results because there is one mighty fisherman today um, it's either Bob I think or Barry Pickersgill depends how big those carp were that he caught earlier and Graham could be third and Frank Johnson Johnson he could be he could be fourth I think it's looking like that so we'll see you soon Ten pound. There we go. It's not recording that. Let me hey, just get it. You can't get a pound this way.
Same fish? I'm sure it is. Right then, Barry, here we go. Let's get a picture of it. Nice fish. Right, nice one. Well done. Wait on it, Well done, Barry. Well, all weighed in. It took about five minutes. What can I say? <laughs> Lovely day. Absolutely gorgeous day, as you could see. We are all waiting. It is the day after because I ran out of space on my SD card. So I wanted you to see Barry's fish that he caught, but we've just got a photograph, I'm afraid. So he got a nice sturgeon right at the end, did uh, Barry Pickers Gill? So nice one, Barry. Well done, my friend. But it reminds me of a program that I used to watch with Terry Wogan. Blankety blank. Can you believe it? What a licked! Action camera, no action. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I just can't believe it. What a licked. First time in. It's a while, I can't remember. It's a few years. So, <laughs> don't, don't, no, point, no point video in my way because it was just an empty net. Along with six others. But we knew it was going to be hard, but we didn't think it would be that hard. It was only a few weeks ago, somebody won a match down there with £80, and he said he'd been catching, the owner himself, Marty, said he'd been catching with... So he expected £40 and everybody else to be catching bits and bobs, but it fished rock hard, six of us blanked. Um, it was a struggle. Absolute struggle, and I have been warning you that it can happen at this time of year if there are no fish in front of you. You ain't catching, no matter how mighty a fisherman you are, you ain't catching. And that's what happened to me today. Absolute blank. I had one liner right at the end of the match with a minute to go. Now, I know Bob at the side of me, he, I was watching where he was casting, and he was catching tight up to the netting in the middle, and he had a few carp. So, as I said earlier, I, will work, I, I searched the peg, on popped up bread, I did a little bit, I tried with maggot, I tried with uh, sweet corn, and I was getting closer and closer to the netting. I think there's a bit of footage of me casting my little method feeder with a couple of uh, dead reds on, and you can see I think I got within six inches. It looked like that from where I was anyway, and I still didn't have a bite. I got a bite right at the end, just on bomb and a couple of maggots, and not a bite, sorry, a liner. That was it for the day. Absolutely zero. It can happen to the best of people. It's happened to Tommy Pickering, in fact. I think he had a double blank one year, and he, uh, I don't think he fished for a few weeks. He actually went back to his, his local club, I think it was at Hayfield, expecting a bit of sympathy, and all he got was, aye, aye, lads, Domino's here. Double blank, I think that's a great name. And that, it made him laugh, it brought him back round, I thought, you know, well, if it can happen to him, it can happen to anybody, can't it? So, there's no point in me putting all the videos in where I'm always catching, otherwise you're going to think I am a mighty fisherman and you can't fail. But you've got to see videos like this, it can happen to anybody. So, no action whatsoever for the action camera with me catching fish, but four people did catch. I don't know what weight Frank actually got. I've not got my book in front of me, but I know he, he only had a bream. It looked like a nice one, a couple of pounds or so. So he was in fourth place. We've got Graham Scott in third place. He had about nine pounds. He had a sturgeon. I think I got a bit of uh, footage of him with the sturgeon on. It was eight pounds something or other, plus he had a pound and something in bits. So uh, what a mighty fisherman you are for third place. We were only paying the first three um, on that day. In second place, you've seen, you'll have you see the picture of Barry with his uh, eight pound sturgeon as well. He's ended up with 19 pounds something. And in first place, my fishing partner, new fishing partner, Bob Huntington in first place with 24 pounds something or other. He is this week's Mightiest Fisherman. So well done, Bob Huntington. Nice one, son. Nice one. 
I can't really tell you too much. I, to I've, I think I've told you what I was doing. My plan was not to feed. Bob's not fed. I saw him fire a few pellets in. He did get the bites. He did say he only got the bites when he was tied up. He was convinced they were moving up and down there. I'm not so convinced that they came as far as me and Sean because we just we not had a touch. Having said that, Barry was catching. I would say he was a couple of feet away from the uh, the netting and the barrier in the middle there, and he, he was catching there. So I just think there were just pockets of fish. If there was any fish in front of me, they certainly weren't taking any bait that I presented. So like I say, I, I spent an hour or two searching. No liners anywhere. I had absolutely no idea where fish were because I had no signs of fish. I know they don't move a lot in winter, but just nothing. The tip never moved. I went on my short line that I put a little bit a little bit of bait down. Tried pinkies, tried maggot, tried, you know, I tried soft pellet. I didn't have a touch on the pole at all, and neither did a lot of other people. Now, Bob, he is a pole fisherman, very skilled pole fisherman, and he gave it a try and he had nothing, absolutely nothing, not a bite or anything. He got everything on the bomb with very little feed. In fact, I'm pretty sure I only saw him fire a few pellets or something in maybe once or twice. I think he gave it up as a bad job and just realised he was catching with no feed on, I think he got most of his bites on, uh, double dead red and the bomb tight up to the netting. So that's pretty much how it's fished. Now, it's probably an unfair video for the uh, for the maggot farm with it with us not catching too much. It is a shallow vent, uh, a shallow venue. The frost it was frozen over for a couple of days. That has definitely pulled them off. I know that some of the other guys, uh, one or two of the other guys, have fished it previously, and we've had, we've heard some good reports. There's been some good weights coming out, so we'll probably give that another try in the summer. Lovely little venue, very comfortable fishing. So we'll definitely give that another try in, in the summer. So uh, nothing much for me to brag about today, apart from blankety blank. So I hope you've enjoyed the insight to having a blank watalicked, as, as we call it around here. Um, if you enjoy my videos we are putting out there, don't forget to press the subscribe button. It's absolutely free. Click the notification bell and you will get notifications as we upload the videos. I have got to say one thing. It's a brand new channel. We are trying to get things right. I've got a new camera now, but there's a few little extra bits I have to buy for it to get the audio right. It's going to have to be a wireless audio, I think. So I have another few quid to spend to get the GoPro 8 up to scratch to get the quality right for you. The old camera I'm using at the minute, that's going to have to go for a service because there's something not quite right with that. But the big thank you, there's two big thank yous. Thank you to you guys. I'm absolutely overwhelmed with the amount of views that we're having and the amount of people that have subscribed. I've had some lovely comments and I'm thrilled to bits that you're, that you're enjoying my videos and we will try and get the quality top notch. The best we can do it, like I say, it is, it is a big learning curve for us, so we're learning as we go along. But thank you very much to you guys for subscribing and you guys watching my videos. It's brilliant. It, it makes the effort well worthwhile. Um, so, once again, brilliant. Thank you very much. And another thank you to my brother. I upload all the uh, videos for him and he edits it all the way in Australia and then sends it out to you and I think it's, it's new to him. I think he's doing a great job. Um, I'm enjoying what he's putting together. And the combination of fishing, a fisherman and a non-fisherman is working because he actually thinks a little bit outside the box, which I quite like. He's putting stuff in I probably wouldn't think of. So, Headley, what a mighty editor you are. Well done, Sunshine. Thank you very much. And I'm sure these people are really enjoying what you're putting together. So, there's my two thank yous. And we shall see you on the bank. We are at Bankend Westlake. That's McCallum's farm at Bankend Westlake. Hopefully we shall have a few more bites there than we have today. So thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed. And we shall see you on the bank at Bankend. Don't forget, fish on the eyes. And we'll see you soon. Cheers.